Good morning, everyone. Thanks for your attendance this morning at today's Veterans Day commemoration. It's the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And we know that comes from the armistice signed in World War I. I want to offer a special welcome to all the veterans here this morning. It's our day. I'd like to take I'd like the, all the veterans in the audience to raise their hand. Now repeat after me. I, I know you're not going to fall for that again. Okay. But I'm sure every single person who raised their hands would do it again. Okay. I'd like to offer the most special welcome to my predecessor, Michelle Caver. Okay. For the last three years, she's kept this organization together, and I can't state that enough. I'd like to also recognize Bob Colby, okay, former post commander and former state commander for the VFW. Hey, Bob. I'd also re like to recognize the VFW Auxiliary. We couldn't perform without them. They are an integral part of our organization, and it's a pleasure to know every single one of them. Thank you, men and ladies. Of course, I want to thank our dignitaries for arriving here today. They will get a chance to address you personally. I also want to recognize our first responders, police, fire, and all the people working in the medical community right now, trying to keep Vermonters alive and safe. God bless them all. Okay, I would like to introduce uh, Mayor Myro Weinberger right now uh, for his remarks. Mr. Mayor. Oh, no. Pardon me. We need to commence with the national anthem. My mistake. And we got Mary Bogusowitz to sing our national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red clear, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that her flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Mayor Myro, Myro Weinberger. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for that beautiful uh, rendition of the national anthem. Uh, that included um, Larry Stoltz, who uh, uh, just a couple years ago was part of the city team, a member of our Parks Recreation Department on the, on the trumpet there. Thank you, Larry. Um, good morning. I, I want to thank each of you for, for joining us this morning and uh, properly playing 
paying tribute to this important uh, day and to the service members that are here with us. It is one of the great privileges of the mayor's office to be with you every year on the 11th day of the 11th month to reflect on the sacrifices and services uh, of our veterans in Burlington, in Vermont, and across the nation. Our community has a proud legacy of military service, and it is my honor to see the positive impact that, of that service each and every day and in every part of our city in the presence of so many veterans in our community, serving as coaches, leaders, and mentors who serve our community with the same courage, honor, and dedication that motivated their decisions to volunteer to defend their country. Among a community that I believe is extraordinary, our military service members, veterans, and their fam families are exemplary. In them, we see a model of courage, dedication, and selflessness. In them, we can find inspiration to become part of something bigger than ourselves. This selfless spirit lit some of the hardest days of the last year, and I do want to reflect on them. Uh, leading by example, our VFW members opened their doors for a warming station, providing food, toiletries, clothing, and most importantly, community uh, to some of the most vulnerable members of our community without another place to turn. Our National Guard members showed up time and again for their neighbors at, at test sites, vaccination sites, hospitals, and, and food deliveries. The tireless and tenacious work of our service members and veterans helped blunt some of the worst impacts of the pandemic and was one of the reasons Vermont pulled through this crisis so much better than so many other communities. In re return for this exemplary and valuable service, veterans deserve the full support of our community when they need it. And one critical element of this support is making sure that all veterans have, home, have a home no matter what challenges they experience. A year ago, after years of community work towards this goal, we declared a functional end to veterans homelessness here in Chittenden County. And we remain committed to this goal as our housing crisis has intensified over the last year and no matter what the future holds. As we move forward together from a period of great uncertainty, it is easier to have faith in what lies ahead knowing that at home or abroad, in heat or high water, in moments of crisis and the eerie calms that follow, there will always be Vermonters who answer their call to serve. Thank you to all our veterans. Thank you all for being here again. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to introduce Senator Patrick Leahy, who is currently the president pro tempore of the Senate, chair of the Appropriations Committee, and our senior senator from Vermont, Senator Patrick Leahy. Thank you. <clears throat> commander, thank you. And I, incidentally, the commander, uh, like our, Marcel's and my uh, son, Mark, served in the Marine Corps, and it's two days, three days since Marine Corps birthday, so I wished him a happy birthday late. And, uh, and Commander, happy birthday. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Semper Fi. Semper Fi. The, uh, and if I had forgotten to remind, send that to our same greetings to our son, Mark, I would have heard about it. And uh, it is so good to be here with you, with the mayor, with my dear friend, Congressman Peter Welch, uh, no, no senator could have a better partner uh, in the House than I have with Peter Welch, and we've known each other forever. And I'm honored to be here with you today. And this is the 100th anniversary of the VFW Post 782. Let's have a round of applause for that. Uh, you know, that's pretty amazing. And I think over the over the years, I, I've been here, Marcel and I have been here, I think even when I was state's attorney a few times, and I love being here. Because the VFW is a community bound together by the shared experiences of fighting a war far from home, sometimes losing friends, always coming home profoundly changed. 
and I've long admired the VFW's deep and abiding commitment to serve your fellow veterans in the wider community and your perseverance. You are an example of what is the best, and we saw it especially during this pandemic. For many years, we've worked together on toxic exposures. The other ever-expanding list of illnesses associated with it, and your advocacy has made a difference for the veterans of Vietnam, Kuwait, Iraq, Afghanistan, and many other battlefields who have been devastated by mysterious illnesses. And I'm proud of the progress we've made in this fight, including expanding the list of diseases associated with toxic exposures. Some didn't want to admit that, uh, and authorities should have known better. And I'm glad that we had a number of members of Congress, both parties, who fought with us to do that. But I think that we need to do a lot more to ensure that soldiers exposed to toxic substances while serving receive the care that they need, the care that they deserve. The struggle to ensure all veterans exposed to airborne hazards and open burn pits uh, receive treatment that will continue, but there's a lot more. And we saw that right here in, in Vermont. And then the stigma over mental health, that's slowly lifting. We should do everything we can. We should help to end this stigma, but then we need to make sure that our soldiers and our veterans have the support and care they need. You cannot accept in the most powerful nation on earth the suicide rates among our veterans, homelessness and substance abuse. Every single one of us, whether a veteran or not, have a duty to help on that. But, you know, I'll get money for this in Congress, but it's you're the people that can do it. And here at the VFW, you provide, Commander, a community, a place to belong, and you've been doing this. More recently, veterans reached out to help another group, those they met in Afghanistan. Veterans connected friends desperate to escape the Taliban and bring the family here. I don't know how many phone calls around, virtually around the clock, my office and I were making over there as were Congressman Welch and others to try to make sure we got them back. And look what happened. We got 120,000 people to safety. Some of those families will be arriving in Vermont over the next several months. Well. I'm the grandson of immigrants, even though I was born in Montpelier. These Afghan families should be welcomed. Please promise me you will welcome them when they come here. So, BF, BFW Post 782, I don't know how many times I've been here with you, but I feel proud every single time. Thank you, Commander. Thank you very much, Senator. I'd like to introduce Congressman Peter Welsh. He's our Congressman at large. He's a, a member of so many caucuses that I can't even repeat them here. Um, he has been focusing on environment and the climate. Uh, we can't live without a healthy planet. It's, it's, it's imperative that we get some of these issues resolved. And, he, and Congressman, Welch is the former uh, senator pro tempore of the Vermont Senate. Peter. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Commander and uh, Senator Leahy. Thank you for your, your beautiful, uh, beautiful words and uh, your extraordinary service uh, all these decades for Vermont. And uh, Mayor, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is a, a special occasion. And I'm delighted that uh, Senator Sanders, our good partner in Washington, is being represented, is being represented uh, here today. Thank you. You know, uh, it is moving that in the 11th day, the 11th hour of the November, remnant, a reminder of all that we've gone through as a country and how in Vermont, literally, 
from the Revolutionary War to the, to the Civil War to Iraq and Afghanistan, Vermonters have stepped up and sacrificed. On a per capita basis, we lost more troops during the Civil War than any other northern state. And that tradition continued down through Iraq and Afghanistan. And it really symbolizes just a commitment to service. The commander in chief sends out the call and Vermonters respond. That has been an enduring part of our history. And people like me who have not served have been the beneficiary of that willingness to serve that has been so much a hallmark of Vermont. And that's why I feel humble to be here today, but I'm like the vast majority of Americans who haven't served, but who have received the benefit of those of you who have. So I say on behalf of myself, and I say on behalf of the vast majority of Americans, thank you from the bottom of my heart to veterans who have been willing to serve and inspire us to serve when they get home. So thank you, one and all. You know, but this is a special, special Veterans Day. It is the first time in 22 years of Veterans Day where we no longer have troops in Afghanistan. 22 years. Day in and day out, our men and women in uniform, and a lot of women were there in uniform, served our country. And here's what is inspiring to me. The veterans in Afghanistan have been the leaders in urging us in Congress, Patrick, me, and Bernie, and the President, to not leave those folks, interpreters, those Afghanis who served our men and women in uniform, to not leave them behind. In a center, Leahy said, yes, we got 120,000 out, but many are still there. And I continue to hear from veterans that we have to continue to make every possible effort we can to not leave them behind. And how inspiring that is for us that commitment that men and women in uniform have to, yes, their country, but to one another, the person who was next to them out there in Helmand province, that person who was next to them at Bagram. You don't leave people behind. And that's why I think, Patrick, what you said, what, that we will welcome these Afghans because we didn't leave them behind and we're gonna welcome them here because they helped our men and women in uniform there. So thank you, Patrick. And you know, the biggest responsibility all of us have, especially those of us who serve in Congress, is to make certain that when the warrior comes home, we take care of the warriors who are wounded. And to just this week, we lost another wonderful soldier, Wesley Black, who was exposed to burn pits and who will be laid to rest tomorrow. We must continue to make certain that those men and women in uniform exposed to burn pits get the benefit of health care without having to prove exactly when and where and how. They were next to burn pits where all kinds of toxic stuff. That's enough and they served our country. So Patrick, I'm with you and doing everything we can on that. And you know, the mental health challenges when our soldiers get back, you know, when I, again, I haven't served, so I say this with humility, but listening to veterans who did, they always talk about the people they were there with. They never complain about what they had to do. But when they come back, they're alone. We weren't there with them. They don't have the solidarity that they had, even in tough, incredibly difficult times. So yes, we 
who benefited from service have to make sure that we do every single thing we can to help folks make that adjustment back here where they don't have that solidarity that they had in that unit that was cohesive and where they shared a goal to help one another, to save one another, to leave no one behind. So yes, the work continues. And that's what Veterans Day reminds all of us who haven't served. We have a duty to stand by those veterans who served us and Patrick and Bernie and I are committed to doing every single thing we can to make sure that the cost of the war has to con include the cost of caring for the warrior. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Welch. I'd like to introduce Catherine Becker Van Hosty who is the State Director for the Office of Senator Bernie Sanders. Thank you. Thank you all very much for having me here today on behalf of Senator Sanders, who is up in St. Albans at a Veterans Day uh, parade and ceremony there. Um, I'm particularly proud that Vermont really does stand with veterans on Veterans Day and every day. Today across the state, we have over 20 ceremonies honoring veterans. Um, we have staff across the state speaking on the senator's behalf at many of these, and it's great that Vermonters show up today to recognize our veterans and your service to our country. Equally, I want to, on behalf of Senator Sanders, say thank you to the families. We know that you serve right alongside your soldier, your, your airman, your, and your sailor. And we are grateful for your service as well and your sacrifice. I want to say congratulations to the VFW on celebrating 100 years. VFWs and service organizations play an absolutely critical part in providing community for veterans and their families, for bringing a space, a physical space, where veterans can come together after your time in service is over, share stories and communicate with one another in a really special way. And I am really hopeful that through the Senate appropriations process um, and through some assistance with federal funding, we can help our VFW here in Burlington and our VSOs throughout the state continue to do that really incredible work. Um, I really quickly, on behalf of Senator Sanders, want to agree with both Senator Leahy and Congressman Welch for their comments around the benefits and the services that we owe to our veterans. And I think it's important that when we talk about this, we acknowledge that what we're talking about is the fulfillment of a contract. Veterans swore an oath in service of this country. And in return, this country said that they would be there for our veterans and for their families when they came home. And so we, as your representatives in Congress, have a responsibility, a moral responsibility, and truly a contractual responsibility to do exactly that. As a former chairman and longtime member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, I know that Senator Sanders is dedicated to that. He is dedicated to providing the health care services, the compensation, housing, employment assistance to veterans. But he also knows that this is a really, truly good thing to do because our veterans are incredible members of our society. If you want to hire a great employee, hire a veteran. As we travel around the country and in Vermont and we look at our great VA hospital and healthcare facilities, one of the things that I'm always struck by and I know that Senator Sanders is incredibly proud of is the number of VA employees who are veterans themselves. They are wonderful employees, they understand the experience of our veterans and they make the care provided there all the better. So thank you to all the veterans here today, to your families and to all those who work every day, as well as Veterans Day, to make sure that our veterans are acknowledged and recognized in the way they truly deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, now with the, uh, the help of Larry Solt, we're gonna pay a musical tribute to all the branches of the service. 
Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? In a few moments, if I sound bad, I'll back away from the mic. Now, this is the part of the ceremony where the celebration comes in. And so for those of you who are here early, you have in your hands the blue sheet, and it is a modified versions of the various songs that represent our armed forces. Our sixth branch hasn't quite um, collected themselves com yet, so they do not have a song, so that's why they're not represented here. So we're Don't going stop. to sing these songs in the way that we want to show our support to veterans. Veterans hopefully will sound off really loud and proud for the branch of service they represent. And all of you hopefully will sound off loud and proud of the service that you say that you are grateful um, for so that it um, honestly represents our way of life. Um, the, the freedoms that we have are based on sacrifice, often the case um, from those who served in the military. And so this is one way that you can show your thanks and appreciation is to do something collectively and, and ensure that it is memorable for all of us. And maybe it'll inspire us to continue to work together in order to have a more perfect nation. So with that said, the best song is first. <laughs> first to fight for the right and to feel the nation's might and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's done, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence, loud and strong, two, three, four, there we go. You will always know that the army goes rolling along. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Now, we are going down just a little bit, but I want you to still keep the energy high for the next branches of service. It is tough to top the Army song, but let us, let us in earnest give it a good go, right? In the spirit of camaraderie and being citizens of this great nation, let's show our support for uh, the Coast Guard, who, by the way, uh, simp the, the name of their song is Semper, Semper Paratus, it doesn't have an origin story um, in that there, it's unknown who wrote it. But Semper Paratus uh, means always ready. So the Coast Guard, in honor of them, let's show them that we are always ready to support them. We're always ready for the call. We place our trust in thee. Through surf and storm and howling gale high shall our purpose be. Semper Paratus is our guide, our fame, our glory too. To fight, to save, or fight and die, I Coast Guard, we are for you. Wonderful. I think Senator Lay, he said he wanted to come up front to. No. <laughs> oh. You heard me sing, you would never invite me back. <laughs> My voice is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job on that trumpet, man. Yeah. Let's hear it for Larry Saltz. And let me correct myself. Uh, the Coast Guard actually does have an author to their song, 
I didn't want to make too much fun of the uh, of the Coast Guard because they get forgotten often and they do great things on a normal basis, keeping sure our shores safe and secure. But I will make, make fun of the next branch of service. Yeah. The Navy. <laughs> Now they don't have a, a designated uh, author of their song. And um, Semper Fortis may be um, um, their, uh, their, their motto, always courageous. Um, and so, that, so that's, that's likely the candidate for, for their motto anyway. But the anchors away, they're, they're not quite sure who came up with that rendition. And so without further ado, because I think I've messed up some of the facts. So all you fact checkers, <laughs> don't come find me because I, I just realized I, I, I did not say that correctly. However, we'll drive on. <laughs> anchors away, my boys. Anchors away. Farewell to foreign shores we sail at Short dream to the farm until we meet once more. Here's wishing you a happy voyage home. Bravo. Where are my Navy brothers and sisters? Hello, greetings. I should have had you up here, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to get the war fighters to the air. Okay, our, our next branch of service, their motto, aim high, we use the Navy for. fly, fight, <laughs> win, <laughs> the Air Force. Everyone knows this, but I think it bears telling one more time that the Air Force is so good because they started out under the Army. They're the U.S. Army Air Corps. Air Corps. Right? And, that, and they were in existence in the best way possible from... The July 2nd of 1926 to March 9th of 1942. So it's, it, it's ingrained in them. They're, it's deeply rooted to do it the Army way. Even though we call them Air Force, their roots are in the Army. Best branch of service. All right, so in 1947, they went out on their own, but keeping in mind that you never go too far from your roots, from your beginnings. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, zooming to meet our thunder. Adam, boys, give them your cut. Down we die, spouting our flame from under. Off with one hell of a roar. We live in fame or go down. U.S. Air Force. Wow. Where are our Air Force heroes? Air Force. <laughs> and I, I forgot to ask Coast Guard. We have any Coasties in the house? They're all down on the water. They're all <laughs> defending the, the shores. Of course, of course. Okay, the last and certainly least <laughs> you know how many Marines it takes to take down an Army soldier? There's not enough out here. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good still. Gutsy. So, <laughs> gutsy, yes. <laughs> and I can't run quite as well. <laughs> kind of messed up here with my left foot. Uh, Semper Fidelis. Always faithful is their model. We all know it. We all know how to say it, except the Marines don't. They say Semper Fi. They can't even remember the rest of their motto. I think eating too many box of crayons, have you heard that? That they like to chew on crayons? I, I'm not quite sure why. Lick windows. Lick windows, yes, that's a good one. Oh. Yes, that's my Army Airborne 
paratrooper buddy in the VFW, Bob Tebow. I want to hear the windows rattle across the street on this next song. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the malls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles on the land as on the sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marines. Lovely, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'll be at 176 South Winooski Avenue, VFW Post 782. Come see me, I'll be performing. <laughs> Nice job, Michelle. Larry, thank you. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna wind up things. I, I truly wanna thank the mayor and his staff for tremendous, continuous local support. Thank you, mayor. And I wanna thank our congressional delegation uh, for their timeless support of veterans' issues. By my count, there's over a hundred pieces of legislation being worked on in Congress right now. And that's in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. So they are working hard and they're sincere about making things right for the people who have served this country. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Hey, I'd like to close with a little reflection a reflection about veterans. And this is a comprised of three words, courage, duty, fortitude. These are watchwords that create the sacred bond between us and our veterans' predecessors. From the first colonial muster called in April 1636 in Salem, Massachusetts, to those service members on duty now or preparing to ETS or demobilize, that bond continues. It continues so long as democracy, freedom, liberty, equal justice under the law, and our nation itself continue. That concludes today's program. All are invited to the post for an open house and a commemoration of our post-centennial, 100 years of veterans camaraderie and support to the local community. Thank you and God bless you.